Hello, welcome to Hypermobility Exercise and Education. Today, I'm going to give a really small presentation on atlantoaxial instability. I would really welcome anybody in this group who struggles with this issue to come forward um, so we can start discussions over it. This is going to be in several parts, so today is only a small snippet, and I hope you enjoy. So we're looking at cervical instability and we're only looking at one um, particular type of um, cervical instability. So when we think about the cervical spine and the cranial cervical junction, it is very mobile and very much supported and stabilized by ligaments. So it's very easy to see how somebody with a connective tissue disorder may have instability in this area. So we're looking at something called AAI, atlantoaxial instability, and this occurs at the C1, C2 junction of the cervical, cervical spine, and it is known as the most mobile joint in the body. So its movements and stability are determined by the contribution of the ligaments and muscles that support it. When we look at the joint from the cephalic view, which would be from the top of your head down, it's very clear to see the amount of space around the adjointe process. So um, if you have ever seen a skeleton or you can look in your theory books, we have C1, which is um, more of a circle with a peg that comes up through it, C2, which is your adjointoid process. Without the support of particular ligaments, the alar ligament and the transverse ligament, there is a real potential for large ranges of movement around some really vital structures, both nerves and vascular. So typically instability of this joint is considered to cause altered rotational mechanics. And so we can still see though, that if you have potentially loss of support from those ligaments, that there might be a shearing of the joint in different directions. But medically speaking, the assessment of the AAI is done on the rotational um, plane of movement. So what are the symptoms? Most common symptoms of AAI are considered to be neck pain and suboccipital headaches. Other symptoms attributed to vertebral arterial blood flow changes include visual changes, headaches from arterial torsions, syncopal events, so that's fainting abruptly because of re reduced blood flow to the brain. So when they turn their head, it goes too far. It cuts off the circulation and the blood supply to the brain. And pre-syncopal events, which is just near fainting or feeling like they're gonna pass out with actually, without actually losing consciousness. As well as these symptoms, people who struggle with AAI might experience dizziness, nausea, facial pain, dysphagia, which is difficulty swallowing, choking, and respiratory issues. So anyone who's got this condition on this group, let us know what you're struggling with. So on assessment of someone with AAI, which is really for the, the medical practitioners or the physiotherapists in the groups, they will have tenderness at C1, C2 on palpation. They'll have excessive rotation beyond 41 degrees. And they present with a jerky type of movement when rotating the head. So it's not a nice smooth movement. There is a loss of control and the ability to move nice and smoothly. They will also, suffer or have hyperflexia, so overactive deep tendon reflexes, dysdiokinesis, which is the inability to rapidly perform alternate, alternating muscular movements such as finger tapping at speed, and hypoacesia, partial loss or total loss of sensation to a pinprick. So neurological weakness is not necessarily a constant feature of AI, which may be confuses some people. So they may think that they haven't got this because of that, but um, they don't always have that. And it's determined uh, by when that person is actually turning their head because that's when they're getting the, the compression of the vascular system and the nerves. So common medical treatment is to the put clients in a neck brace. Now there is always pros and cons to this and controversy. Um, they would expect the 
symptoms to be improved by this, but I found on my own clinic that it depends on why they have it. So if this fails, um, so they uh, recommend physiotherapy, they ask people to avoid movement that brings on symptoms. And if this fails, then fusion of C1, C2 joint may be considered. Some countries take a more conservative approach than other countries. So it may be difficult to find a surgeon who will fuse this area of the spine. I know in the UK, they do not do this. Um, in America, they have a few people and in Italy. My personal experience with AAI is that when it's a rotational issue, we have rotation going on through our entire body. And if we have issues going on down the chain or in the cranium, we can create a shift or a torsion at this particular part of the spine. And it will make people have less rotation to one side and more to the other. So the first port of call for me would be looking at what changes the rotation in their cervical spine. Is it correcting a different bit of the body, stopping excessive rotation in one direction? So physiotherapists or sports therapists or Pilates teachers, you want to be very careful when you're assessing the rotation because you don't want to be bringing people into an event, but you also do want to be looking at the connection from the uh, bottom of the feet all the way to the cranium. And I feel that the physical therapy sometimes doesn't work as well as it could do because the, um, the fixation is on stabilization where actually we all know if something doesn't move, something else has to move more. So you can get these odd rotations. They do, there are, um, chiropractors and osteopaths that will do small adjustments up at this level of the spine. But once again, if it's driven from somewhere else in the body, then that's not necessarily going to be the best plan of action because you might actually make it more unstable. So we will look into assessing this more in another one of my small presentations. So I hope this was useful in some ways, just to start to get you thinking and give you a little bit of knowledge in the AAI, about AAI. We will come back next week and we will look at CCI, which is cranial cervical instability, which is a slightly different, well, at a different level, an issue at a different level. And then we'll follow these videos with some videos talking about the West, best and the most advocated ways of dealing with them at the moment. Thank you very much.